This video will focus on the basics of jogging or manually driving the robot in joint mode. When we refer to driving or jogging the robot in joint mode, we're referring to what's called axis specific motion, which means we have the ability with the teach pendant to rotate or control each axis individually. This may sound like it gives a greater freedom of control and to a degree it does, but it can make programming lengthy programs extremely difficult using only this mode. This mode is recommended for zeroing the robot and situations such as that when a precise angular value is needed. To jog in joint, we first have to understand what the joints or axis are. The bottom of the robot's base, the part that mounts to the floor or to the wall or ceiling or on the conveyor depending on the situation, is called the base frame. This part here that goes around this link arm, this is called the rotating column. The rotating column joins the base frame here to form axis one. This long, the long part of the arm here is called the link arm. The link arm joins the rotating column here to form axis two, which gives forward and back motion of the link arm. The part here, the large part here, is called the arm. The arm joins the link arm to form axis three or joint three here. And the purpose of this axis is to move the wrist axis four through six are called the wrist of the robot to move the wrist up or down relative to the robot's axis three. The wrist is a single unit axis four, a rotational axis which twists the wrist either clockwise or counterclockwise. Axis or joint five which goes through the knuckle basically here of the robot and this will move axis six up or down relative to the position of the robot. Then axis six or joint six. This is often called the flange of the robot, the flange in which the tooling is mounted to. This is axis six. And axis six simply rotates clockwise or counterclockwise. The first step to jogging in joint mode or any mode is to select your coordinate system. Our coordinate system selection button here allows us to change between the coordinate systems by tapping the button. And now I'm in joint mode. Alternatively, I could have used the coordinate system button on the teach pendant keypad here. By pressing it, it also cycles through the available coordinate systems for jogging. In this case, I've chosen joint. To be able to move the robot, I must ensure that run is enabled and the motors are enabled. So A plus motors on to enable the motors. Now we're able to jog the robot. If I rotate axis one, it's simply going to rotate the arm clockwise or counterclockwise, as we can see here. Axis two will move the link arm forward or back. Notice how the entire robot moves with it. Nothing else is moving. It's being moved by that axis. So this makes it difficult for tool positioning and things such as that. Axis two. Axis three, where the arm joins the link arm. It moves the wrist up and down. It's a rotational motion, but it's basically up and down with the wrist, as we can see here. Axis four is the same here, where the wrist joins the arm. And when I rotate axis four, it simply rotates the wrist either in a positive or negative direction. Axis five simply moves axis six up or down or up or down relative to the robot's zero position. As we can see here. Axis six rotates the tooling. Rotates the tooling. And that's jogging in joint mode. It's a very simple process, although it can be inefficient for a very lengthy task, but it's also a necessary part of jogging or driving the robot manually. <laughs>